So in this video, we're going to be looking at um, some more with right triangle trigonometry. So this video is going to be building off of what we did in the previous one with those trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Now in the previous video, we used sine, cosine, and tangent to find the ratio between the sides of a right triangle. So if we want to find the degree of an angle, just like it says in the second sentence, we're going to use the inverse of these functions to find the degree of an angle. Um, this is also important, so it's important to understand that if we take the inverse sign of the sine of an angle, they undo each other. So the inverse sign of the sine of an angle is equal to whatever the angle is. So for example, if you're asked to find the inverse sine of the sine of 70 degrees, your answer would just be 70 degrees. And we're also going to use that fact to be able to solve these equations to be able to find the measure of the angles. You'll see what I mean in a second. So let's look at the story problem so you can see what we're going to be doing. It says, consider a right triangle, TOP, in which the hypotenuse, TP, is 25 and TO is 17. What is the measure of angle TPO? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a right triangle. And it's important to make sure that we have this labeled correctly because it specifically says the hypotenuse is TP. Now, you could use T and P like this or, whoops, lost the side there. Or we could use P and T as your hypotenuse. As long as TP is your hypotenuse, it doesn't matter where the P and the T go. Because we're using this diagram simply as a reference. It doesn't have to be exact, so don't get too hung up on that. But we're using it as a reference, so the vertices need to be in the correct places. So T and P is going to be the hypotenuse, so that's going to be 25. And TO, now they don't tell me if that's the shorter leg or the longer leg, that's why it really doesn't matter too much which side would be TO. So we're going to use TO then to be this side. So what is the measure of angle TPO? Now, remember from geometry, when they, have it, um, when they name an angle, the middle letter represents the vertex. So TPO would be this angle here. So this is the angle that we're looking for. So now in order to find the measure of that angle, we're going to do just, do just like we said yet, or did yesterday, and that's see how these sides relate to the angle. Now this is the side here is opposite that angle. The 25, that's the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. So which we need to think of which trigonometric ratio uses the opposite and the hypotenuse. Well, that's going to be the sine. So it's going to be the sine of the angle equals the opposite, which is 17, over 25. Well, I want to figure out what x is, and x is a measure of an angle. So to get the rid of the, to get this x by itself here on the left, I'm going to take the inverse sine of each side, because that's what this is telling us to do. Take the inverse sine of each side, and as a result, that leaves me on the left side, which is x equals the inverse sine of that ratio, 17 divided by 25. Now you plug this in on your calculator. Now on your calculator, when you plug this in, we're going to take and go back to that trig button. So here's our inverse sine of 17 divided by 25. And you get 42.8 or approximately 43 degrees. And there's your answer. So let's try it with this one. Here we want to find, we're going to draw a triangle, QRS. And SQ is 19. And SR is 15. So R is this angle, so SR is 15. And like I said, SQ is 19. What is the measure of QSR? QSR, here's my vertex. That's the one that we're looking for. So why don't you guys give this one a shot, see if you can't figure out how to set this one up and solve it on your own. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, so let's see what you did. Now you should have recognized that this is your adjacent leg and this is your hypotenuse. So we're gonna use the cosine of the angle equals the adjacent leg, which is 15 over 19. 
Now to save myself a step, I know that I'm finding an angle here. So to find the measure of an angle, we always use the inverse sine, cosine, or tangent. So I'm trying to find the measure of the angle x. So I'm going to use the inverse cosine of 15 divided by 19. And when you do that on your calculator, you should have gotten approximately 38 degrees is your answer. Now sometimes they have our sides written down a little bit differently. Instead of naming the vertices, they just say it's a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. Or sometimes they use colons to say 5, 12, 13. In which case, the longest side is going to be your hypotenuse. That's the most important piece. So the hypotenuse here is 13. So that means the other two sides are going to be 5 and 12. And they have the triangle set up for us here. Now it says find the measures of the acute angles. So we're going to try to find both angle A and angle B. Well, let's say, if, let's call uh, angle B, let's say that's, um, or let's start by trying to find angle A, I should say. So angle A, we'll call that X, we'll call this one Y. Angle A, angle A well, first off, since I know all three sides, I can use any of sine, cosine, or tangent. Because I know that I could use the sine, so I could use the opposite, which would be 12 over the hypotenuse, which would be 13. I could use the cosine of the angle to say the adjacent leg would be 5 over the hypotenuse, which is 13. Or I could use a tangent, which would be the opposite leg, which is 12, over the adjacent leg, which is 5. Any, three of, any one of those three would give me the correct answer. So let's use sine here. So it would be the sine of x equals the opposite, which is 12, over 13. So to figure out what x equals, I'm going to use the inverse sine of both sides. So the inverse sine of 12 thirteenths is going to give me a measure of 67.4 degrees. So that means angle A, or angle X, is 67.4 degrees. Now to find angle B, we don't have to go through and do this all over again, because if I know this measure, I can easily figure out what angle B would end up being. To do that, well, we know this is 90 degrees. There's 180 degrees in a triangle, so that means if this is 90, that means my, ang my two acute angles add up to be 90 degrees. So to find angle B, I could take 90 degrees minus the 67.4 degrees, and that gives me an answer of 22.6 degrees for angle B. So there's your answer. So why don't you guys try this for a 3, 4, 5 triangle, so you're going to have to draw your own triangle here. So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. So you should have started with the 3, 4, 5 triangle like this. Uh, you can name the, so let's just say, well, we want to find the measure of the two acute angles. Let's call this X and this Y. So let's say if we're trying to find out X first, let's use a different one this time. Let's say if we use the cosine of the angle. Well, then we're going to use the adjacent leg, which would be 3, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. So to find x, we'd take the inverse cosine of 3 fifths, which would give you 53.1 degrees. So one of the angles would be 53.1 degrees. To find the other one, you could subtract it from 90, and you would get 36.9 degrees. So those are the measures of the two acute angles. Remember, acute means it's less than 90. Just to review some terminology there. Now let's look at, this, let's look at a story problem. Here it says, suppose a cell tower is anchored to the ground by a supporting wire that's attached 120 feet up the tower. The wire is attached to the level ground 100 feet from the base of the tower. What is the angle of elevation of the wire? So here we have a situation. Let's say this is your cell tower, and here you have a wire attached to it. Well, I tell you that that wire is attached 120 feet up the tower, so this would be 120 feet. And it tells, they tell you that it's 150 feet from the base of the tower. This would be 150 feet. What is the angle of elevation of the wire? So we're trying to figure out what that angle is. So I look at this. I'm going to use tangent because I know the opposite leg and the adjacent leg. So it'll be the tangent of x equals the opposite, which is 120, over the adjacent, which is 150. So 
This time we'll use the inverse tangent of 120 divided by 150, which gives you an angle of 38.7 degrees. That'll be your answer. So you can see with what we're doing today, it's pretty easy, especially after talking about what we did yesterday. Let's look at one last example here. A surveyor standing on a bridge points her scope toward an assistant standing on level ground, 110.56 feet from the base of the bridge. Her surveying laser measures a direct slant distance to the assistant of 125.75 feet. There's hundredth of a degree. Find the angle of depression of the scope. Okay, so I'm going to draw a terrible picture here of a bridge. Whoops. Okay, we'll say that's a bridge. You have a person standing on the bridge, that's a surveyor, and they have a little laser here. Their assistant is down on the ground. So here we have a right triangle. So they tell us that the uh, person standing on the ground is 110.56 feet from the base of the bridge. And the slant distance, so from the laser to the person, is 125.75 feet. And we're trying to figure out the angle of depression. Now, we haven't talked about that yet. Now, we talked about angle of elevation. Now, angle of depression is formed when you look straight across and look down at an object. So the angle that we're looking for is this one here. Angle of elevation, remember, is formed when we look straight across at an object and then look, or straight, straight across or horizontal and then look up at an object. So the angle that would be formed would be your um, angle of elevation. Well, the, we're looking for this angle up here, the angle of depression. Now remember from geometry, if we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, another line here, we have alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles would be equal to each other. So in other words, the angle of uh, depression is the same as the angle of elevation. So you want to get that in your notes because that's important when you're solving some of these story problems. So to find x, if both of these angles are the same, I'm going to base it on this one down here, our angle of elevation. So I'm going to use the cosine, because I know the adjacent and the leg and the hypotenuse. So to find x, we'd use the inverse cosine of 110.56 divided by 125.75. Do that on your calculator and you get an answer of 28.5 degrees. So why don't you guys try this last example on your own. And so why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answers. So when you solve this problem, what you should have done is this. You should have set up a triangle here, this is my uh, lame attempt at making a hawk, and we'll call this a rabbit down here. Um, but when it says the altitude, the uh, spot, is, the hawk is at a height of, or an altitude of 215 feet, that's referring to the height of the triangle. And when it says it has a direct distance to the prey, that would be the 406 feet, that would be the direct distance if the hawk were to fly directly at the rabbit. So that would be the slant distance, the 406 there. You always want to make sure that your units are in the same, or that your units are the same here. So if one was in miles and the other was feet, you'd want to change that.